something very unusual happened yesterday. Joe Biden actually sat for an interview. <laughs> now, granted, it was pre-taped. It was with a relatively friendly a interviewer. Nice. Yeah. But even so, he didn't fare all that well. No, he didn't. Um, got asked a very obvious question about why he supported the Iraq war. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. Look, the reason I voted the way I did was to try to prevent a war from happening because, remember, the threat was to go to war. The argument was because Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. So he said that I need to be able to get the Security Council to agree to send in inspectors to put pressure on Saddam to find out whether or not he's using, is producing nuclear weapons. And at the time, I said, that's your reason. All right, I get it. That was, the, the rationale was, that's the way to not go to war, because I didn't believe he had those nuclear weapons. I didn't believe he had those weapons of mass destruction. And you may remember the debates we had after that mm -hmm. period about when Colin said, anyway. So that was the rationale. Mm -hmm. What happened was we went in, determined that they hyped what, in fact, was occurring. They didn't. There was no concrete proof of what, what he was doing. And they still went to war. And the irony of all ironies is the first thing that Barack Obama did when I got elected, when we got elected president and vice president, was turn to me and say, end the war. Not a joke. You run the deal to bring out 150 plus thousand combat troops from, from Iraq. And I did. So, you know, the idea that I took the word of a president saying that he wasn't going to go to war and this was the way to avoid going to war was, in fact, a mistake. It was a mistake. I've acknowledged that 15 years ago. But the idea that Bernie Sanders' judgment on foreign policy is superior to mine, uh, I find uh, I'm anxious to debate him on that question. So basically, he's saying that he voted for the war to try to avoid a war. Oh, and by the way, he didn't believe they had those yeah. weapons of mass destruction it's saga. True. It's just not true. That's the other thing is uh, they have all clung to this fake narrative. Remember that we have to go all the way back to 2004 to relitigate some of this stuff. <gasps> yes. But they all had the same explanation. Oh, well, we voted for the war in order to send the inspectors. And the moment that we going to have a coalition, then we said, no, now we're against war. Nope. Completely false. 2003, September 2003, uh, even more afterwards, the invasion. We have clips. I've played it here on the show of Biden actively supporting the invasion of Iraq, the decapitation of Saddam Hussein. He didn't really turn against the war publicly until 2004. Right. And especially in, in, in terms of a wholesale way against the U.S. troops in Iraq till 2005. Right. Let's just be honest about that. He's like, oh, I didn't trust. I mistook and misbelieved President Bush, all that completely false. He believed that there were WMD. He said, let's send in the inspectors. That he has claimed that his only vote was for the inspectors. But even after that point, parroted all of the, we don't want the smoking gun to be the mushroom cloud. And now thousands of Americans are dead. And so are at least hundreds of thousands of Iraqis. That's right. Long yeah. after that vote, long after the Iraq war started, he still supported it. He taught, he bought all the WMD talk. There's no evidence that he ever was like, oh, that this was not true. It was a lie, et cetera, until we all saw that it was a lie and untrue. And remember, Always important to remember, as bad as Hillary Clinton's vote was on this, Joe Biden was in a much more senior position. He was the head of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He was the one who was in charge of holding these hearings in the march in the lead up to war. So he was the one who was putting witnesses on who were basically beating the drums and led us to that place. The fact that he backed it was incredibly significant and vital even for the Bush administration to be able to make the case mm -hmm. and ultimately get us into that war. The fact that he still, after all this time, number one, is like blatantly lying and contradicting the clips of himself that anyone we can, can readily go out and, Easy. and yeah. watch easily, that he's still such a mess and all over the place on this, make, still inventing new pieces to the story and ad-libbing yeah. and adding in new things. This is a disaster for him, especially, I mean, this was one of the things that you should speak to this that yeah. was uh, in an, a significant piece for Donald Trump oh, yeah. to buck the Republican Party convention on the Iraq war. It was the most, for decades, Amer uh, Republicans waited for somebody to call out George W. Could George W. Bush sold out the Republican agenda in favor of the neocon Iraq war. And you know what ended up happening is they didn't get the domestic policy that they wanted and their sons and daughters went to go die in Iraq and Afghanistan. And 
People waited and and waited and seethed for years for somebody in the Republican Party to call him out. Marco Rubio couldn't do it. Jeb Bush couldn't do it. And one of the seminal moments was when Trump was on the stage and called out Jeb Bush and said, your brother is the one who got us into war. People cheered and people waited for that yeah. for so long. It was one of the reasons that he's president. Zed Jelani is actually, whenever I think he was over at The Intercept, he did an analysis or he wrote about a paper that showed which that people, even working class areas, which disproportionately had more military deaths from Iraq and Afghanistan, voted more for Trump over Hillary, keeping all other things equal. Yeah. So e all places with higher casualties, yeah. keeping all things, unemployment, economic conditions equal, military casualties disproportionately affected how people voted for Trump. Because think about it, it's in your neighborhood, your, I mean, you and I know people who were killed or maimed absolutely. in the Iraq war, in the Afghan war, and that, sticks with you for the rest of your life. That's absolutely yeah. the case. And look, we're starting to get a look at what a Biden administration would look like, what the foreign policy would look like. Mm -hmm. No surprise, it's gonna be Susan getting the band Rice. back together. Yeah. Same old, same old with the military industrial complex run of the show. Yeah. Susan Rice has been floated for his cabinet, John Kerry, Tom Donilon, all the greatest Libya hits are coming back. Standard so, issue, yeah. military industrial complex neocon stuff. There you go. Fun times. All right, we'll have more for you after this.